punch his ticket to he Burbank. Missed. He missed. Will he do it? He missed. The kick is up. What's going on, guys? Chaos here. Excited to bring you guys another video today. That game really turned me into the Madden player that I am today. It helped get me to my first live event. It made me a lot more known in the community. It set me up for the entire Madden 18 season going into Madden 19. It really helped build my brand to the point where I was able to grow it as much as I have today. And without this game, I honestly don't know if you guys would have a YouTube, have a Twitch for me, have all those things that I'm able to give you guys, have the eBooks, the tips, everything of that nature really grew from this game. So I'm really excited to bring it to you. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna dilly dally too much because it's gonna be a longer video. It's gonna be a chaos coaching video. If you guys haven't seen those before, it's really just me going in and explaining why I do what I do, showing you my mistakes, maybe showing you things that I think they should have done, things along that nature. So I hope you guys are ready and let's get into it. Before we get into it, one more thing, guys. Sorry. I want to ask that you guys could please hit this like button for me. I really do appreciate you guys have really been killing it for me. I should ask that you guys would continue to do so. And if we get 200 likes in this video, guys, I will drop another MCS game that I break down. I'm going to be going through a series. It's going to be an MCS series from all my previous games, Madden 18, Madden 19. Not every game, but just all the exciting ones where I think you guys can really learn something and I can kind of go into my thought press on, process on it. If you guys think that's a good idea, let me know in the comment section. Let me know if there's any certain games you guys want to see. Any, uh, and If you guys just think they're great games, just let me know. And if there's anything that you guys want me to do for this series, please don't hesitate to put it in there. But without further ado, let's jump into this video. Alright guys, so just to set the stage for you guys, this is the finals of the Madden 18 Philly Challenger event. The winner got to the live event, so it was essentially a $10,000 game against one of the best players of all time in Serious Mo. Beginning of the broadcast got cut off, so you're going to see you missed the kickoff, as well as the this first down play, you just see the end of it. So that's where we started off at. So when you're starting off in a game like this where you're not the favorite, and like everyone's kind of doubting you, and you're going to come in a little bit nervous. This is my first finals game. It's the biggest tournament of my career at the time. Uh, it's really going to make or break your season. You want to try to find a run to establish against against the person that you can have success with to kind of ease your nerves a little bit. If you can have a successful run, you know, break a big one, or you just have something that you can do consistently without having to pass the ball, it's going to really make a lot of things easier for you. So that's what I was trying to focus on early on. You see me audible out of the inside zone to go to base right there. Early in the tournament, I saw a lot of 3 through 5 at the time. Base, base was a good run for me. Obviously, he showed right there he could kind of stop it for a small game. So that was good for him, and it it made me think, okay, that run might not be it. Let me try to find another one. So throughout the game, you're going to see me try to find a run that I'll have success with just to kind of ease my nerves and make things easier on myself. In a big tournament game, you don't want to pass the ball every down. Something else you're going to notice is I don't flip my trip side end. At the time, I didn't feel comfortable flipping it. You guys know me now. I flip it every single time to the long uh, wide side, but I didn't do that at the time. And it probably hurt me in this game a lot, to be honest with you. Right here, he's all over everything. I could have just thrown my drag if I had waited on it, but feeling the pressure of a championship game, a tournament game, I'm nervous, and I throw a pick right there, and it was a big play for him. And I, I tell you what, I was already feeling pressure. That made it go from here all the way to here, through the roof. I was nervous as could be. So great play by him, and really a, a great job by him to really continue to put that pressure on me and make me double guess, like kind of second guess myself, like, man, am I really going to be able to play in this game? Am I going to be able to play it? Like, can I beat him? I was really thinking at this time, like, if, if I give up seven right here, I might lose. So this becomes a huge defensive possession. You get stopped in your first possession. That's not the end of the world. You can still come back from that, of course. It's still 0-0. Zero, zero. Something you're going to want to do, though, is make sure that you get yourself a stop. At least hold him to three. If I give up seven here, I really start to press, and maybe I'll make a mistake on my, last, on my next possession, and maybe I get away from my run that I'm trying to find. Like I told you guys, I want to find a run to help me set a limb. If I give up seven here, I'm probably going to just be nervous and start and try to pass every single down. So it's important that I that I hold him to three here, right there. Eh, maybe a questionable read by him. Good defense though, and we force a third and five. This is a big play because I think he's going to kick it here if I get this stop. I feel confident that he'll kick it just because he felt so confident on defense that first drive. I didn't even get a single first down. So right here, a little loop around to, to blow up the run. That was something I had against tight slots dive, and I was able to successfully do that against it there blow up the run, and we force three. No need to show you that. There's going to be minimal cuts, guys. Anyone that's familiar with chaos coaching, it's always minimal cuts. But I will cut out like field goals and kickoffs that are unimportant, stuff like that. So just be mindful of that. Right here, you see me audible that base again. I'm going to try it again, and he blows it up again. Now I'm completely off that run. Two rushes, negative one yard. That ain't it. That's not going to cut it. 
and it's not going to make it easier for me to make me more, more nervous. Instead of what I'm hoping to be like a second and five, maybe second and six, it's a second and 13. Start to sweat a little bit more here. You got you to do something to just get that, get that nervousness out of your head. Get this first down somehow, right? So you probably want to go to one of your better plays right here. I believe I go to X-Bot. We'll see, though. But that's probably the play that I would call right here back at that time. Yeah, X-Bot. You want to go, you want to, actually, that might not have been X-Bot. That might have been Drive Post. But you want to go to probably your best play. When you're feeling nervous, you're feeling like, I, I need to complete a dot. Have a best play in your book. Have something that you like to go to, and you'll know, all right, I'll get a completion of this play. I'll be able to move the chains. As you can see, I also picked up that he wanted to send six right there. And I think he's going to send more and more pressure as, as the game goes on, thinking at this moment, because as a nervous player, you want them to have to make a read. I always say, if you don't think someone can make a read, send six, send six, send six. And right there, he's mad. I honestly felt like that was a good read. I just didn't think I got the catch animation, but who knows. But I did notice right there he played cover four with hard flats. I saw the coverage, and that's why the deep quarter was able to kind of play my corner out and make a play on it. So what I've seen from him on these past two plays is cover two, send six, cover four, send three. Those are the two looks I've seen from him, and those are the two looks that you're going to see a lot throughout the game, and you're going to have to get used to. And kind of just kind of pick what you think you're going to see. Right there was cover two with the blitz. We hit our drag underneath, and we moved the chains. So as you guys can see, I'm starting to get a little bit more comfortable. I almost had the pick on that on that corner route. Yeah, I mean, maybe it could have been a pick, but I really didn't think that was a bad read. It looked like it was open and we just didn't get a catch. And then I completed two drags. So as you complete, complete more passes, you're going to start to loosen up a little bit. And something I did notice right there was the inside zone was very successful when he wasn't there to shoot the gap. So something I don't do throughout the game. This is what I'm going to let you guys know. If someone's shooting the gap on you, right? on your inside zone you can't do anything but they're making a lot of defensive adjustments you see he's moving his outside corner every play he's moving his safeties down every play and i'm letting him get in position you just saw him move right there he blows it up i let him set that up the entire play i can't do that if i want to run inside zone don't do six hot routes to fake like oh i'm gonna pass it no just come out and quick hike it if they're trying to shoot, shoot the gap on you and they're doing all these different things if i just quick hike it he wouldn't be able to shoot down most likely i'll be able to get my play off Something definitely to note, and it can keep me from getting in these second 13 situations that I don't want to be in. Right here, nothing's really open. I just stay, uh, stay calm in the pocket, and I hold RB. As I, as I remember back in last year, if you could hold RB, you'd never fumble. That's how it was at this point of the year, so I'm not going to fumble that ever, and there's nothing wrong with taking that hit. Otherwise, this year, I would say you have to slide. You don't want to fumble. If I fumble there, it would have been catastrophic considering I already been stopped once, so... Something as a side note here as we play, it actually was pretty funny. I was watching this game back, and it was just listening to the commentators. It was like, oh, man, these guys were on me crazy. It was like almost out of this world as I have a nice little laser right there on X-Spot. They were just on my neck like, chaos is going to get blown out. What's he doing? He's scared to death. And like I was nervous, but like they were on my neck. So just a side note, I, I don't know why I wanted to talk about that, but it was crazy how bad they were on me. Pretty much to the end of the game, they were pretty much saying, like, I'm going to lose, I'm going to choke, all that stuff. As you can see right there, what I what I talked about, inside zone, he was on the left side. It caught him before he could really get to that gap shoot area. I pick up six. So I didn't do that enough during throughout the game. If you catch him, I would almost, if, if I wanted to run the ball, I would audible to inside zone every single time. If I get the playoff before he gets to his position, hike it. If I can't, then I don't hike it and I go to my, I audible to my pass play that I want. It's regs, so I have 40 seconds. That is an eternity. You can do three audibles with eight hot routes and still get a playoff of 40 seconds. It's way different than the 30-second clock, and it'll help you ha uh, be able to change plays and change your mind a lot of the time. So if any of those regs goons out there, I know I hear you guys all the time. Like, I'm a regs guy. I don't care about much, stuff like that. Take advantage of that 40-second play clock that you get because that 30-second clock is way shorter, and you really, really feel the difference. Now, after that dot to the one-yard line, here's what I'm thinking. We've clocked the whole half. We've had a great drive. I want to take at least one time out from him, so I'm going to run QB sneak. Last year, QB sneak was terrible. I would almost bet money I knew I wasn't going to get that first down. I just wanted to either take a time out from him or take 40 seconds. And as you can see, I took a time out. Now, I want to get in. I did gain like it looked like an inch right there on QB sneak, so I figured mm, maybe I'll try it again. I'm pretty sure that's what I run right there. But it's not very good. It was anything but a guarantee that you would get in. On QB sneak this year so it might not have been the best call but I do call it just because I wanted to give myself a chance to kind of quote unquote get lucky if you get in with sneak last year it was luck and there's nothing wrong with trying to get lucky but 
hit my center in the butt, nothing to him, and we go to third down. Something, it, it's something Joel told me. It was one of my, he's one of my best friends in the community, and he was at this tournament, and we actually talked about it the night before at the hotel. We were talking about if you're at the one yard line, just run toss, just run toss. If you make, if you make the right choice, they can't stop you. If you just cut outside, if they go out, if they go inside, you cut outside. If they go outside, you cut inside. Plain and simple, it's very tough to stop. So I'm gonna go to the toss here. And I actually make the wrong cut. If I go outside, I probably get in right there, at least I think. But we're able to cut it up, get the seven. And guys, I can't tell you how much of a relief that was. When I got that seven right there, with the stop that I got on the previous possession to hold him to three, I got all the confidence in the world. All those nerves are gone. I'm feeling good. I felt like I made great reads all drive. I didn't think I made a single bad read. And I felt comfortable. So now I'm just thinking, let's get one more stop. And go into halftime with a lead and try to figure out what we can go go with from there. But I'm definitely, all the nerves are kind of going now. And this is a drive to kind of feel out what he wants to do. I always tell you guys, every single game, that every video I've made, I tell you guys, the first drive of the game is a feel out drive. The drive that I had before didn't really help me feel him out because I only got three plays and he kicked us three. But now I kind of get to see what he likes to do. I've seen his tight slots dive. Now I've seen him audible to Trey with, uh, I can't remember that play name, but it was a play with the, the wheel from the middle receiver, and then he either drags or slams the inside guy, and he has a post from his tight end. And I saw that play right there, and I'm going to see that a lot more. So just picking up on tendencies, seeing what he audibles to, seeing what he goes to pass from. Uh, right there, we, we got H-back wheel from him. He was able to get a big first down for himself. First completion. And I feel like I'm doing a good job. I feel like that was a tough first down. I just want to make him work as much as possible, see as much as his repertoire as I can see. Like I said, if I make him work, I'll get to see more of his plays. I'm likely going to see the same play again with the inside receiver on a drag or slant or inside zone, which is what we get inside zone right there. But I'm getting to see a lot of what he wants to do. The way Mo played, especially last year, was he had like three, four uh, formations, all with three wide receiver sets. That he liked to audible around to. So it's important for me to note, okay, when he goes to this play, he likes that pass. When he goes to this play, he likes that pass. Uh, so just knowing what he likes to do is important. And right there, guys, we made him work all drive, and we forced ourselves to pick. And you see me, I'm standing up. I'm hyped. It's no more nervous silence. It's no more sitting there like, oh, man, I hope I can win. And uh, it's look at that determination right there, guys. Excuse my haircut. It was bad. Bad, bad, bad. <laughs> but... I'm excited, and we're getting a chance to now at least get three. Here's what I'm thinking on this drive. Do not force anything. Don't throw a pick. You don't need to do anything extra. We are going to pass on first down to give ourselves a chance at seven. If I get like 15 yards, 20 yards, I'm like, all right, I can get seven here. I'm going to work for it. But if we don't have anything, I just need to make sure I get anything other than three. Like If I don't get three on this position, it's, it's probably the worst possible thing that I could have done because I got to stop it ends up doing nothing for me. So I at least need to make sure I get three. After that sec, it's, I'm in a spot where it's like, hmm, I, maybe I need to run the ball. In regs last year, you needed to get to like the 40, 39-yard line-ish area to be comfortable kicking. So I needed about four or five yards in two plays. And he didn't have enough timeouts to save the clock if I ran the ball twice. So I just want to make sure I don't give him the ball back and I get at least three. So I, don't, I just don't want to do anything stupid here. Personally, if I had a run I, would, I could go to that I'd already found, felt comfortable going to, I would run the ball. But since I don't have that, I do pass. Like I said, throughout the game, I'm searching for a run that he really, like, not that he can't stop at all, but just one that I'm comfortable going to that I know I can get three, four, five yards from if I go to it. And I just hadn't found that yet, so I couldn't risk getting blown up for a three-yard loss. Now that I'm at the 38, you kind of can lose a yard or two because, like I told you, the 40 is comfortable. Audible to single back bunch dive, which I hadn't done all game. Looking for a run that works. And guys, I found it. That single back bunch dive was big for me. You're going to see it throughout the game. And it's going to help me to later on close this game out. Now, as you guys can see, we cut to the third quarter. I made, I made my field goal. We're coming out in the second half. We If we get one more stop, the game is pretty much over. We'll go up two possessions. So, I'm trying my best to get a stop in this possession. I need to make sure... I make him work on this pass because he hasn't passed the ball effectively yet. He has, I think, one completion, maybe two, but it might just be one completion. And the only thing that he's really gotten is the three points that we gave him on our stop. So we just don't want to let him run the ball. If we don't let him run the ball, we'll feel comfortable. Uh, we'll feel comfortable 
win this game because I don't think he can really pass the ball every single down and beat me. I just really don't. So if he can lock up the run, we'll be in great shape. Forcing second and tens, forcing 39s like I did on the possession where I got the interception is perfect. And if I can continue to do that, we'll be golden grand, boys. So second and 10 here, he goes to the run and he gashes me. He absolutely gashes me. I'm going to be honest, at this time in my career, of course I knew about gap shooting, but I wasn't really the best gap shoot. Like, I really wasn't. I, I sucked at gap shooting inside zone. So you're going to see most of the time when I stop him on the run, outside of that gun, uh, that single back tight slots, it's pretty much block shed stopping him. Against the dive, I was able to gap shoot with that little, like, reverse, reverse cut from the linebacker. But other than that, I could not stop the run. So where we gave up an easy touchdown, it's exactly what you don't want to do. We scored in about 40 seconds. And it wasn't just a score, it was really just how he scored. You don't, when you feel like someone's uncomfortable passing, you need to do anything in your power to stop the run. So I told you guys how to stop the run this year, manning up, uh, manning up safeties, gap shooting. I've taught you guys all those things. It's things at the time I did not know about. Now, it doesn't mean you can't stop the run. It just means you're going to struggle a little bit more. So I give up an easy one right there, which is frustrating, but not the end of the world because it is our ball. And if we can go get uh, three or seven, we'll be back in good shape. We're playing good defense this game. We've held to three. On possession, they were already in field goal range. We got a stop, and then he just got an easy seven that we didn't really make him work for. So just got to continue to pass the ball effectively. I'm not going to lie to you, though. It does frustrate me, frustrate me that at the time I never flipped my trips tight end because it's just so much better from the wide hash. I just didn't feel comfortable with the buttons uh, flipping on me. But the better, the better I've gotten, the easier, it's, it's, the easier it's been. So now that I'm so comfortable in it, it just makes the trip side end even that much more lethal. But right here, we actually missed our read. Uh, something he did every time he was in cover two and blitzed, we had that, he never put a deep third. He never changed his shell from a cover two to a cover three or a cover four when he blitzed. So I actually had that seam read to Jimmy Graham. I missed it right there, which would have been a big game. But it is something I'm going to come back to. I think I feel like I noticed it. Sometimes you know how you make a read, but as you're making a read, you see the other players. It helps you guys to, to really read coverages for future downs. I feel like I would, that's something I noticed, and I'll come back to it, and I'll hit Jimmy Graham in that scene. But third and eight here, big play, because after giving up an easy touchdown, you do not want to get stopped. And like I told you guys, I come back to that seam read. I knew I had it. I just didn't throw it last down because I noticed it too late. So... Good job there to pick up the first down, and it's a big first down. Because like I said, I gave up a touchdown easy at halftime. To give up an easy touchdown like that and then give him the ball right back would be nothing nothing less than very, very, very disappointing because it'll put yourself in a bad spot. You want to get at least three here, take the lead back, and put the pressure back on him. Whenever you can get the pressure off yourself and kind of just make them have to work, the more mistakes you're usually going to make, especially in a big tournament game like that. Like I told you, I went back to that single back bunch. Having good success with that dive, it's going to be something that I definitely go to throughout the game because you, I feel like in a tournament game, you almost need a good run. Now, there's people, there's exceptions to that. There's passes like Young Kiv, like Joe Rice, uh, Skimbo, guys that literally can pass the ball every single down and be successful with it. Me personally, that's not me, and that's probably why I didn't have as much success this year. Because I tried to be like that a little bit. I didn't really have a run that I liked to go to. And I suffered for it. I feel like you need at least a run that you can run six, seven times a game. I'm not saying I can't pass. Because I can pass. But like six, seven times a game just to run the ball and keep him on edge will help you out a lot. And we get ourselves a laser, guys. He went to cover four. But he took his opposite side deep quarter off. We get ourselves a touchdown. And you can see me. I'm hyped. Matt's all in my ear just looking... <laughs> Matt, Matt, the whole game was just, he was he was locked in as much as I was, trying to figure out what would, probably would help me win. Now, he wasn't coaching me or anything, but I feel like he was just like, probably thinking to himself what I should do, and that's just the type of person he is, but great job there, man. We whew, we got ourselves a lead, and it's just like, when you get that when you, when you get that seven-point lead in that second half, it's just like, whew, you know, I mean, just a little relief. And we're going to try to finish this game off right. It's the same exact position we were in from halftime. If we get a stop, this game is over. We'll go up 10 at least, and we're going to be going to Burbank. But let's see if we can do it again. It, we're down 7. I mean, excuse me, we're up 7, and we just got to stop the run. I feel like, I really feel like he cannot pass consistently. If I put him in a position where he needs to pass every single down, 
he will not be in good shape. And right there, you guys see me. I told you guys I could shoot the gaps a little bit. But I just didn't feel super consistent with it like I am now. So big play there to make it second 11. He goes right back to it. I think he could sense that I was not comfortable with it. But block sheds really help you stop the run sometimes, especially last year at this time with that Seattle D-line. So third and 10, biggest play of the game. He actually learned something right there. So I always tell you guys when I see something on defense, I try to notice it. His little running back, like it's kind of like a streak route, but it wasn't really a full-out streak. It occupies my three rack on the right and allows his slant to get in a nice little pocket for him. And he noticed that, and he's going to go back to that consistently on that play. He he had a drag there before, and the drag kind of got played by the three rack. The slant, not so much. So that's something he noticed, and it's really going to help him later on in the game. I always kind of give myself props when I think I found something to go back to, and I'll tell you guys to do that. He did as well. He should obviously go back to it because I I didn't stop it. And if I don't stop it again, like if something works, go back to it. See if it'll see if it'll give it up again. And just and keep going back to it until they show that they can stop it. And right there, another one wide open. I didn't here's something I did at the time. I didn't really get rid of my three rec. Three recs were so good early in the year last year because no one knew what it did. The three rec from the safety, it looked like it played every route. It jumped around, it'll guard a drag, it'll guard a post, it'll do whatever. And people were just like so struck by it. And it's it kind of got me into a bad rhythm of not ever getting rid of it. And if I had put a hook curl there, it would have stopped that slant. So that was a mistake by me to give him that back-to-back -back times. And then he dots me over the top. That was something I hadn't seen all game. Maybe he was holding it in his back pocket. Or maybe I just got more pressure before to prevent him from doing it. But he gets off a deep pass on me. And he ties the game. Here's what I'm thinking in my mind. First, after I get the touchdown, I'm like, gosh dang it. Now I have to go clutch. <laughs> but, I mean, obviously it's a lot easier if I just would have gotten a stop there. And I could have just ran out the clock. But puts a little pressure on myself. But this has to be the last drive. Guys, it's a 40-second clock with three minutes to go. This has to be the last drive. I'm not giving him the ball back. I'm either going to get three and we're going to win the game, or I'm going to turn it over on downs and give him the ball back with nothing left. Obviously, if he stops me, he stops me, but my goal is to not give him the ball back at all. I have to I have to go find a way to get three, and I want it to be with no time left on the clock. If I give him the ball back, he's really found a rhythm on offense and kind of the beginning of the game, we really had him in a, a little bit of a box. He had, he had trouble moving the ball, but as the game uh, went on, he kind of picked up his rhythm and found some plays that were going to work for him. That slant play from the from the tray was really good for him, and then he bombed me over the top. So he must have some things out of that five wide that he likes. So good play for us right there. The spins last year were really, really good, just like this year. I was able to get two spins off, and it helped me a lot to get that first down and kind of relieve the pressure. It's the same thing as the beginning of the game. Early in the game, you want some success. You want to like kind of alleviate your pressure, get a couple good passes off, throw a couple drags, get a couple good runs off. Same thing with this money drive. When you're on a money drive, one little baby dot. You know what I mean? One little nice run. Something that just really gets you going. And and that's exactly what that was. It kind of loosened me up. It's like, all right, all right, I can go get a first down. I can go get, a, I can go get this field goal. You know, I can, I can really move the ball. Just calming yourself down. Just having those things that you can go to that you know, all right, I'll be able to get a pass off here and I'll be able to complete a pass. Just your little baby dots, they always make you feel a little bit better about yourself. I love myself a baby dot. Every year, I have a couple plays where I like to go to where just I'm okay with five yards. I'm okay with that. I always have something in my back pocket for that. PA counter goal was that for me last year. That out route from the tight end with the out route from the running back was really, really good combo. So here we go. We're moving the ball steadily. We go to inside zone. I definitely should have quick hiked it if I was going to run that run because he had been gap shooting me all game. I honestly, I consider that super lucky that I did not get blown up in the backfield right there. But we somehow pick up a first down, and I'm letting this clock run. I'm letting it move. There's no way I hiked this ball before the last couple of seconds. If I do, it would be an extreme mistake. I just want to make sure now I need about 10 yards. Like I said, you need the 39, 40-yard line. That's where you can feel good to kick a field goal. So... That's the marker I'm trying to get to, just one first down, because you guys can see I'm already at the 50. After that, it doesn't matter to me. I'll kick it from anywhere. I just wanted to, the only the only thing I need to do, get 10 yards, take this clock. Now I'm not going to hike it quickly again. Now, now I have the clock. He's not calling timeouts. He thinks he'll get a stop here and win the game or win in overtime. I'm thinking to myself, I get a first down, win the game. It's really just a battle of wills. Whoever can get this get their play to work better wins now because he's not calling his timeouts 
they're out of the question now because I'm taking this clock all the way down. I'm going to go back to this dive. And like I told you guys, I had success with it all game. It forced him to run commit right there. Here's what I think that problem was with that play. I think he kind of played his cards too early. And you're going to see why in a couple in like a couple plays. That run commit there really was playing his cards too early just because it prevents him from being able to do it later, in my opinion. And I'll let you guys know when that when that comes up. But realize we're on a third and four. I need one pass. I'm going to my favorite play drive post because that's the play that I had success with all game. And I felt like I would have one of my drags open. It's a double drag play with a seam streak and a post. I feel like it... I feel like it's going to be tough to guard one. The drags usually will beat man. The post beats man. And then if it's cover two, I'll have one of the drags. And if it's cover four, I'll likely have the post of the drag. So right there, he mans up my drag. Uh, maybe a tight window. Who knows? But shoot, when Burbank's on the line, my guy's going to clutch up and catch us. So that's the big play. We go to the dive. And we're, like I said, 39-yard line, that's field goal range. I'm going to let the field goal get done by by the live commentary because it's really really cool guys so that's it for me i hope you enjoyed the video let me know what i can do better and like comment subscribe but take it easy peace oh god let's go and chaos with the pressure kick uh oh does he get it and beat Moe? is he gonna get he punches his ticket to he burbank missed. he missed what are he doing he missed. the kick is up he the kick is good oh! and chaos is on his way to burbank shot